I wrote down on this piece of paper 10 random tips that might just save your day or save your beat or maybe even save your life. That was fish oil, multivitamin, vitamin C, turmeric. That's why I take every every morning. Turmeric is good for inflammation. Multivitamin to get the vitamins you're not gonna get in food. Fish oil is good for your brain. But yeah, good morning. Welcome to the video. Right, let me drink some more coffee and wake up. <laughs> What is going on guys? Welcome back. I've been wanting to do this video for a while or a video like this. I wrote down on this piece of paper, 10 random tips that I thought of from complex to very simple. Basically different things I do in FL Studio without noticing and I never mention it in videos. So let's get into it. If you enjoy this, make sure you drop a like in the video. Make sure you subscribe if you're new here and you've never seen me before. I'm working on a new drum kit. I'll be testing out some more sounds today. The past three videos or more, I've been testing out sounds. Until I put this kit out, I'm gonna put some pressure on myself. You can use the code, I better write this down. Use the code KYLE30 to put some pressure on myself. You guys can get 30% off any kit on my website until I put it out on kylebeast.com slash kits. Tip number one, uh, something I do a lot, using the scroll wheel on your effects. So if you just use the scroll wheel and, and put your mouse over one of these, you can just scroll up or down and you can move certain effects to different places. The order in which these are here affects the sound. For example, just to show you how it matters, if we put this little high and low pass parametric EQ and then move the second parametric EQ below it, this is pretty confusing. Then if we look at it again, as you can see, because this one is on top, none of those frequencies, none of these low or high frequencies are coming through that second EQ. Same with like compression, limiting, the order of your effect rack really matters using the scroll wheel to move them up or down instead of just getting rid of it and then entering it in another spot. Tip number one. This was, this was originally labeled as a hi-hat, and I guess now it's a percussion or a snare, I don't know. <laughs> tip number two and three, tip number two is you can right click on pretty much every single knob and you can automate it. And if you don't know what automation is, you can right click on anything, go to create automation clip and it will create an automation clip for whatever that thing is. For example, that was the channel volume. I'll, I'll show you what the EQ in here. If I go into the EQ, you can right click on here, which is the amount knob, or you can even create your own high pass, low pass filter by right clicking on the actual curve knob thing here. Create an automation clip, bada boom, bada bing. If you drag it all the way down, it's at zero. It depends on what the thing is that you're using, but basically it's zero to 100%, whatever you're using. And it depends 
on what you're right clicking on. But for example, I can create a little automation clip on just this one knob. And it will go down as it goes down. And obviously that's probably a horrible example. But tip number three, let's get right into tip number three. If you have a controller, just like you can right click on anything to automate it, you can pretty much right click on anything to link it to a controller. I don't do that. I just have this. I don't use these little wheels if you can see them down here, but a little motorcycle. When I used to use this thing, you can just say this is plugged in and I wanted to link the pitch right here to the controller, which is a horrible idea, but you just click, click link to controller. And then once you click it, you move this and it will know it's moving. And then this knob will move up and down. Tip number three. <laughs> Tip number four, if you're using a punchy kick, AKA the frequencies aren't in the low end, clashing with your 808, if you're using a punchy enough kick, you don't have to side chain your 808 and your kick. You don't need to. If you have a punchy kick and a great sounding 808, you don't have to side chain them because the frequencies aren't going to be colliding. Just level them out and you're good. Tip number four. All right, let's go right into tip number six. Say you had a melody right here. Say this is just a melody that you got from me or something. And say you had a good ear, but you just didn't know music theory. This is what this ticket trick is for. This tip trick, whatever you want to call it. Say these ghost notes weren't here and you're just trying to figure out, you're just, you're just listening, right? click around, either click or play, and you have a good ear and you know what notes can work. This note works, this note works, this note works, that note works, that one works, that that doesn't work, that works, that doesn't work, that works. You can feel around and know what works, what notes work or what notes don't work. Just click them all in. And then from there, you can go into Pitcher, the stock FL Studio plugin. If you have no clue what the root note is, and you have absolutely no idea what the root note is, you can guess and check. So let's see, what, what note is in there? D sharp, C sharp, but C's not there. C is in here in this one, so that's not it. It's not D, D minor. Let's say G sharp, no, C's not in there. There's a couple notes. E, there's no E in this. And you can click, click around in minor or major until you find the scale you're at. If you really had to find the scale of a melody for some reason, whether it was you recording for an artist, you can do this to find the scale. For me, when I first started doing this before I knew any music theory, I would know what notes worked, but I wasn't able to be like, all right, this is F minor right here or whatever. I just knew what notes work because that's just how I learned. I just knew from clicking. I would click all these in and be like, I have no idea what this is. How is this F minor? Say we thought it was F minor. Let's just double check to make sure we're right. C, C sharp, D sharp, F, G sharp, A sharp. Boom. It's a useful tool that I use a lot or used to use. Now I just kind of know. That was the worst description of all time.
Say you have a melody and you don't know this melody here from the optics drum kit. Say for some reason it was a melody, wasn't labeled, didn't know the BPM. Just load it up into an Edison so it, we can just keep looping it without bringing it into the actual playlist or whatever. Bada bing, bada boom. And what you can do is just right click again, right click here on the actual BPM and click on tap. And then what happens now is you can just play this and you can just tap. Once you get to the end, it will tell you what BPM it's in. Tip number seven. Tip number seven is layering. Don't underestimate the power of layering your sounds. No matter how good you EQ or reverb or add effects or pitch correction or whatever, whatever, when you're messing with drum sounds, like snares, claps, hi-hats, whatever you're messing with, percussion noises, vocals, when like you're recording your own vocals or you're putting vocals into a beat, that, that extra effort you make to find that second sound that maybe you can layer on top of it, it, it allows you to get a lot more creative and kind of create your own sound too. Don't underestimate the power of layering, that's all I'm trying to say. Tip number eight, when you're dealing with loops and all that stuff, if you pitch something down, 200 cents, right? 200 cents is the same as going to the keyboard and going shift and down twice. It's two notes, essentially. Going two notes down is 200 cents. 1200 cents is an entire octave. If you went down 1200 cents, which would be all the way down here, that's an entire octave. You shifted it down one octave, AKA if you went to the keyboard and held control and went from C6 to C5. Say this melody was paired up with this melody. If I was like, you know what? I kind of want this melody's a little muddy. I want to pitch it up 300 cents. Don't do 250, 240. It's going to throw off your melody as long as it's on tune. And then you can pitch out the rest of it. One, two, three. That's something that I didn't figure out for years when I first started making beats and it was huge once I did figure that out. Tip number nine, shift and control are your friends, especially on the piano roll. That's where I use that stuff the most. If you hold shift, you can select any note you want here and you can move it in any way you want. Say we had these first three selected for some reason and we wanted to pitch them up an entire octave. Hold control, press up on the keyboard. Actually that kind of sounds good. If you hold sh control again, we can sh we could pick these three notes, we could pick these four. If you want to shift them down for some reason, another thing you can do with shift is if you have all the notes selected, or even if you don't, you can hold shift and you can click on the velocities down here and it's gonna make every single velocity that you come across the exact same. So basically what I'm trying to say is use shift, use control, find out other shortcut codes. Shortcut codes, including shift and control, are your friend, so learn them. <laughs> lo-fi trap I make from time to time and it always sounds like nothing I've heard before but it sounds good it's not really lo-fi it's not really trap it's not really boom bap what is it final tip of the day this is a random tip there's another volume knob that you might not know about maybe you do say for example this sound just wasn't loud enough you turn the volume knob all the way up you had you had this knob all the way up and it's just super low in your mix you don't know what to do you don't want to use, a, you can use a limiter It may be compressed it. maybe you don't want to do that. There's another volume knob on here. So if you click on the sound and you click on this wrench 
right here. Miscellaneous functions tab. There's another volume knob here that just boosts the gain so you don't have to do any limiting or compression or any of that crazy stuff. You can just boost the sound if for some reason because it's just so distant and reverbed and that way obviously that's extreme i wouldn't put it that loud don't use that if your mix sound like ass and the whole thing's being compressed by the limiter but if you have some rare occasion where you have some weird sound that no matter what you do is just too quiet everything in the mix sounds good so you don't want to like do anything crazy go to that other volume knob and you can just turn it up and that's my list of 10. let's hear what this beat sounds like All right. Oh my God. Get over there. Here we go. All right, so that's the end of this video. I hope you guys learned something. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure you drop a like. Whatever other tips you guys have too, other random tricks, leave them in the comments below and let's make a tips thread in the comments. Like I said earlier, if you use the code Kyle30 until I put out the next kit to get 30% off and uh, catch up on all the other kits. Let's listen to a quick little preview of what this beat sounds like. It's pretty clean. I like it. It's super different. Like when you when it starts playing, it sounds like it's halfway through the beat. It's so it's it's almost like some weird, I don't know. It's kind of just some unique thing that I do. Some of my beats just just sound like this. And it's just a weird lo-fi trap boom bap style I have. I kind of like it. Um it's just smooth and just flows 85 86 BPM. Let's listen to a quick little preview of it right now. That's literally why why I do everything I do. Like I was never, I never start making beats to make money or I never start doing anything. Like it ended up just being beats because that was the thing I didn't give up at. Cause like we were talking about earlier, like I tried selling show names. I tried a million different things. It always just kept coming back to beats. But like the thing I value the most is freedom. And like everything else is just a bonus. it's hard for me to like hire people it's hard for me to like have some sort of like manager or lawyer or like talk to fucking labels or or like i don't know just because like that's not why i do this like i'd rather just be on a fucking farm somewhere making music and making money <laughs> not a farm i know I've never lived on a farm, but I'd rather just be like in a fucking nice suburb or somewhere making beats than being controlled by fucking 400 different people, just like famous. That's the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. That's the beat. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe. Appreciate all the support. That's it. I have nothing else to say until the next one. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. My life's been me stuck inside the studio inside don't hate it maybe i should get right maybe you should turn left maybe you should decide any tide pause instead of getting rocked the clubs of people you don't like and don't even know turning up walking around staring at them oh that's fun oh i drive a 2010 toyota corolla